Good morning, everybody. I thought I would do a complete little garden tour this morning. I'm not harvesting anything yet except green peas, but a lot's going on and I thought I'd show it to you. And I wanted to start out here at the end of my driveway so that I could kind of walk you around and give you a feel of the property. You may hear traffic and I apologize for that, but I'm way out here by the road. But I know when I'm watching garden tours, I love seeing people's plants, don't get me wrong, but sometimes I can't get any grasp in my mind of how their yard is laid out or how their plants are laid out. And it just gives me a, a better visual to walk it like this and maybe it'll help you to understand how I have things laid out. Um, let's just jump in and we'll, it'll roll out as we go. I decided that I'm going to make it my business to ring all of the trees around here with either mulch or with potting soil, the, the good organic soil I bought, and then mulch around that. So I'm either gonna mulch things for mulching sake, or I'm gonna put the soil with mulch around it to try to make a planting area. And this is why, because I mowed yesterday. <laughs> I mowed all this yesterday. And I had no idea because my son had been mowing, but I had no idea how many roots he was dealing with mowing around these trees. I, I guess I should have known that, but I just, he never complained, so I didn't think anything of it. But there's so many roots and there's so many little divots in the ground and little stumps like this stump right here. There's just stumps everywhere. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna try to make it as easy as possible to mow and I'm gonna put borders around all this stuff so that you're not mowing right up to it and we're not having to worry about weed eating. So yesterday I did this one. This is just a stump out here by the road, but it had some good dirt around it. And so I brought one of my pepper plants out here and planted it. And I think I'm gonna ring this uh, stump with peppers. They love heat, they love being in the sun. So why not take advantage of this spot out in the wide open? And I have actually an abundance of pepper plants. I have some already in the ground. I have some in my window sills that are getting ready to go out and I have some that I have just started and they're seedlings. So I have a lot of peppers and why not just spread them out all over my yard. This is just a tree that I'm gonna ring with the mulch. This one I haven't gotten to yet. It's next on my list, but I'm actually gonna ring it with soil and then mulch. And I'm actually gonna make this where I plant my New England spinach. From everything I've read, New England spinach wants heat. It won't even germinate until it's very hot and it loves growing in the heat. This again is right out in the open, except for just a little shade that'll be there from the tree. But in general, it gets full sun all day long all around this tree. And I'm gonna take advantage of that and put my New England spinach here. And also, I could be wrong, but I'm just thinking also, no one really riding by is gonna know that's an edible spinach plant. I imagine people riding by will just think it's some type of hosta or other plant that you just put at the base of a tree and don't even think that it's edible. And that's okay. I'm gonna let it be that way because it's kind of like gorilla gardening right in your front yard. Planting things that are edible that people may not even notice that are edible right in your front yard. So why not? I went back out to my driveway and I'm gonna walk and what we're gonna do first is go to the left side of my driveway, which is where I put my corn patch. My last video that I just did that said there's more to the story of my corn patch. This is it, this is the corn patch. And I'm proud to say I walked out this morning and my black eyed peas are coming up. I'm so excited, I'll show you those in just a second. These front rows I rode up and they are going to be one, two, three, four, five rows of striped bush beans. Over there, this long row is gonna be two different types of okra and garden burpless cucumbers that I've planted in between the okra plants. This whole row along this side is black eyed peas. And then the flat part in the middle, I actually dug little trenches with my plow and I planted bodacious corn in the, to the front about 15 feet and to the back 15 feet, I planted Mosby prolific corn. Those haven't come up yet. Uh, I also should say I planted some edamame seeds in with the bodacious corn. I haven't seen any of that coming up yet, but I didn't expect it to right now. I am kind of looking for it to come up by Easter Sunday. 
So I'll be excited if I walk out here and I have corn by Easter Sunday. But my black eyed peas are coming up. I just love it when stuff starts coming up. I just love it. I love it. And they're doing this, not every one of them. There's, it looks like you have missed spots, but they're really not missed. It's just those uh, seeds haven't come up yet. But I have lots of them coming up, lots of them. And it's like that all the way down the row. I have a really good stretch right here of them coming up. So when you walk out here and you see that, oh my gosh, that's the best feeling ever. <laughs> that's just the best feeling ever. This is my potato patch. It's actually in rows. It's just hard to see at this angle, but it's in rows. And my potato plants <laughs> look so good. I thought these were gonna be no-shows, Yukon Gones instead of Yukon Golds, but they're not. They made a showing, they're here. And they're doing good, I guess. You know, you never know till you start digging your potatoes. I might be doing a potato flop video. Uh, you never know. I don't mean to be negative. It's just that you never know. And I don't want to sit here and act like a pro that just knows everything about potatoes and how to get the best crop. Uh, my experience has been it's a pot shot. <laughs> it's a pot shot. You don't really know. And uh, But all I can tell you is it's a for sure fail if your plants don't come up. Mine did. It's a for sure fail if your plants don't even seem to grow and are kind of looking fizzly. Mine aren't that way. Mine are looking wonderful. So I've got a lot going for me. I've got a lot going for me. So I'm, I'm gonna try to be positive, but until you see the crop, you just don't know. This is another little side row I just put along this fence because I had a few left over. Now this one plant right there, this one plant is my hero of the freeze and it's actually two plants i didn't realize i had put two right there together but it is two red currant tomato plants i'm so happy for these i'm so excited they survived the freeze because i forgot about them <laughs> i didn't come over here and do anything and they lived and they looked gorgeous the morning i walked over here they were little but gorgeous they had uh, a brother and sister that were right there along the fence that died but this one hung in there and it's growing every time i walk out here it's bigger and these are supposed to grow and reseed themselves really easily that's why i put it along this fence row so i'm hoping that works out that's my garden on this side of the house got my corn patch here can't wait for it to start being a true corn patch and really producing some food but let's work our way to the other side coming back out here to my driveway we're gonna to go to the right this time. Let's see what's on the right side of the driveway. This is the first bed that I put in along my driveway. It kind of curves with the driveway a little bit. What you see growing there so good in the middle are colored willow leaf lima beans. Colored willow leaf lima beans. And they're doing good. They were still in the ground during the freeze, so they weren't affected at all. Matter of fact, as soon as it warmed up after the freeze, they popped up. They just popped up. I'm going to put twine and wire and things like that between all these poles because my tomatoes are going to need it and these lima beans are going to need it. I haven't done it yet, but I will be doing that here shortly. This end of the bed, I lost all my tomatoes. I had tomatoes all there and I lost them all except one little tomato right there. I've got to look and find out what tomato I had planted there. I do have it charted, I think. <laughs> I do kind of mix things up sometimes once I'm out here actually planting because you see that you have more space, so you might end up planting a different plant there. I think that's a whirly red, but I'm not really sure. I'm going to have to check. I also had one of my Wilson yellow golds that bounced back and survived. It's still small, but that's okay. I started some more in the house and they only just have their two first leaves right now. They haven't even started getting their true leaves. So at least this one will have a little jump on everything. So I'm happy about that. I'm amazed at what did pull out after that freeze that I thought was gone. And I'll keep showing you a few things as I go. Like this, for instance, this is on the same little flower bed and it's a super Sioux tomato. 
and it bounced back and it's thriving. I have come along in some of these beds and went ahead and planted some of my pepper plants because they were ready to go out. This is a sweet banana plant. I'm trying to spread my peppers out from each other, but I'm not really worried about crossing or anything. I'm still gonna save seeds. As you come along my driveway here, it's the second bed that I put along my driveway. And this bed I'm so excited about because some of the tomatoes I thought were goners, and I showed them to you. They looked horrible. They were brown, just limped over. They looked done, but they came back. All of these in this row here, and there's even a little tiny one there, those are all Atkinson tomatoes, and they're very, very productive heirloom tomatoes. I'm so happy those made it. I did start some more, so I'll have plenty, hopefully, if everything goes okay. And those there, and there's one there, are Cherokee purples. I started a few more of those too, so I'll have a lot of Cherokee purples before it's over with. Right next to those Cherokee purples and Atkinson tomatoes, I planted two what they call Shervina Shuska peppers. <laughs> I have to say things slow sometimes because I'm not used to growing these varieties, but I'm excited about it. They're called Shervina Shuska peppers. I believe I got the seeds off of Seed Savers Exchange, but I'm excited to grow them. Uh, we'll just see. I'm gonna let y'all see when a lot of these grow as to what style they are and how they grew, but I think these are gonna do good and I'm excited to grow them. And I had one, two, three, four of these mainstream cantaloupes that came back. They just came back after the freeze, so here they are. I did start more because I didn't know, but four of them survived it and have kind of given me a little jump on this, so I'm excited about that. I had also put lima beans in between the middle two poles in this bed, and these are lynch lima beans. They're from the collection of seeds that I ordered it two or three different times from Clemson University. They're just a, a heirloom variety that someone donated the seeds to Clemson at some point and they sell them. So I'm trying them. I'm going to see how they grow. They're supposed to be very prolific. <laughs> I usually try to always select the ones that say they are very prolific. They say they're very viney. So I'm hoping they'll do good but these are Lynch collection beans from Clemson University. We're gonna see. I have one tomato plant down here and I don't know which one this is. I had all my information on a full size sheet of poster board. I decided after the freeze and because I was gonna be replanting to divide that piece of poster board in half and just make a smaller scale drawing because I kind of got tired of having a big, huge sheet of poster board on my bar. So I divided it in half, made me a new schematic and threw the other half away. Well, some of these tomato varieties were written on the half that got thrown away. This one has a little bit different leaf than the other ones have, a little bit wider leaf. I cannot remember what I planted here. So we're gonna see. As you leave this bed, still coming along my driveway, you get to my azalea branch bed. And y'all, this, this little bed here has given me so much joy. I, I just, every time I walk outside and I look at it, I'm excited. And that's what this was all about. That's what this was all about. Putting these branches here and making this bed and hoping that my plants would love it. And I think they do. The beans that I planted on this end are called Cis Italian Black Swamp Pole Beans. I got the seeds from a company called Sand Hill Preservation. They're in Calamus, Iowa. And uh, unfortunately, I heard Calamus, Iowa come up a bunch during Ryan Hall y'all's tornado coverage a few days ago. So I'm hoping everything's okay there. I'm hoping everybody's okay. Uh, I, it was strange because a week or so before that, when Rolling Fork and Amory, Mississippi got hit so hard, I immediately, my ears perked up when I heard Amory, Mississippi was in the crosshairs because Amory, Mississippi is where all the seeds come from that are sold at my co-ops, all the bulk seeds. There's a company called Seed Service Division 
and it's out of Amory, Mississippi, and they service all the co-ops. So I have no knowledge of how that company actually survived the tornado, but I have been thinking about everybody and just praying that everybody's okay and that that company's okay because I know it probably employed a lot of people. And um, so my prayers for them, my prayers for Sand Hill Preservation in Calamus, Iowa, but that's where these seeds came from. And I have a little spoon here that marks the next variety, but this variety all right here is the Cis Italian Black Swamp. And I, the reason I keep saying uh, the name and where I got them is because I want to encourage people to buy these if possible. Now, I haven't got to where I've seen the actual bean and harvested, and I can't tell you anything about its harvest. But I can tell you that this plant here, these seeds just germinated great. They came up great and they're doing great. That's all I can tell you right now. I'll update later. But look, they just grabbed onto my little branches they are just loving it and they're happy and they're healthy and i just can't speak enough to the seeds we'll see how the actual beans do this middle section looks a little more sparse but that's because they're just coming up um, i planted tobacco worm here tobacco worm beans and that's actually what my marker says but that's not what's here anymore only two tobacco worm plants came up these two right back here those two came up and I, they came up first before any other bean in this bed. And I was so excited. I was like, oh my gosh, yay. And nothing. After that, for three weeks, nothing. So I punted and I went and picked out another bean to plant here. And I decided to plant a yellow pole bean. That way when I'm dealing with a green pod here and a green pod down here, I'll have yellow pods in the middle. It'll be easier to differentiate. So this is called a Spangler yellow bean. I got this one, I believe, from Appalachian Heirloom Seeds, and we'll see. Uh, I do know it germinated good, and it came up great, and it's starting to grow. So we'll see how it does and how it is at harvest time. These beans down here are called Aunt Mary's Meat. I believe I got these also from Sand Hill Preservation. Yeah, I know I did. I know I did. Um, I got them a couple years ago. I grew them. They didn't do well in our Louisiana heat. I only was able to get one pod and save six beans out of the pod. I just let them dry and I saved the seeds. Last year I planted those six and was able to grow a few um, beans and save 64 seeds. I kind of just shot my wad this year and I put them all in the ground. I didn't save any of them back. I put them all in the ground and so far they're very very happy. So far they're very very happy and they are starting also to want to twine on my branches there. They're sending off little runners. This one has a good runner. I need to train it back towards that branch. But they're called Aunt Mary's Meat, and I highly recommend them, especially maybe if you live in just a tad bit cooler climate. They don't like full sun. It said they did. It said that they liked to be sown in the heat, but I have found in our humid tropical heat down here, they don't like it. They do like shade. If you'll notice, they're under a pear tree, they're in dappled shade, and that's what they seem to like, and that's where they seem to grow the best. So that's what I'm gonna do with them. As I save seeds year after year, you know, I'm just hoping and praying I can really get a good seed bank for that plant. This is the back side of uh, the branch bed. I had one Sierra Gold plant down here that survived the freeze. I didn't have anything in this stretch survive, but I'll plant new things there. Right here, I have five, there were six, but one's bit the dust. I have five Shishito pepper plants. Well, they hadn't completely bit the dust. It's still technically there. We'll see how it goes. Um, I just keep hearing about Shishito peppers and how good they are and how easy they are to cook and all. So I ran across these at a store so I went ahead and just bought the plants. Meantime, I did order me some seeds, so I'll be able to start seeds next year and um, hopefully have these forever if we really like them. There's another Sierra Gold melon and then another one down here, getting ready to just take off. These tomatoes all behind there are those Robe Mountain Tommy Toes that I showed you that 
I don't know how, but at the time I thought that was the only tomatoes that had survived any of these beds out here. And they not only survived, look at them. They're just springing up, look at them. It's just wonderful. One more little bed that I have to show you right over here. This bed took it on the chin after the freeze, except for that plant and that plant. This is a pedigree Duran melon plant. That is a Jubilee tomato plant. I had those under metal pots, just like uh, stock pots, soup pots, like you'd cook with in the kitchen, but that's what they were. The plants under those metal pots were unaffected by the freeze. They did wonderful. <laughs> if I had enough metal pots, I would always know to cover everything with it, but I don't have enough metal pots. This other stuff in here I thought was done. I mean, it looked terrible and I thought it was done after the freeze, but some of it's bouncing back. That's a Jubilee tomato. That's a P.L. de Sapo melon. And that's a Jubilee tomato. So, oh, and I forgot, there's another Jubilee tomato right there. So I've got a couple more Jubilees I've started that are doing okay inside and I'll plant those out here. But all in all, this bed made it pretty good. I keep backing up on my driveway just to give you a perspective. We went to the corn patch. Then we went on this side of the driveway over here and around and looked at everything. Now we're gonna go on the little section that's by my house. My project today is to do something that I saw on a friend of mine's videos, Samantha from Starkey Farmstead. She showed how you put sections of PVC pipe in the ground. I don't have mine out here with me. You drill some holes in the bottom of them. You spear them in the ground. And then you can either just direct water into those, but it waters very deep into your soil, however deep you've driven it in. Or you can also feed it, or do both, feed it with things like eggshells, banana peels, organic matter, to kind of make a little composting tube. Then when you do put water in it, you're kind of making a little compost tea that kind of filters into the ground over time. But also, they attract earthworms in there to eat that organic matter. So then you're building up your earthworms. I texted her or commented to her and I said, do you think that'll work with my pumpkin plants? Because pumpkins and all are heavy feeders and need a lot of water. And so I'm thinking it would be a good thing to do in this, like put it say right there and let it do all these pumpkins in a deep watering. She said she thinks it'll do great. So it just so happened the other day when I was cleaning around the 18 wheeler, I found little bitty short sections of PVC pipe from when the people did my plumbing and I've got them. All I gotta do is drill holes in the bottom and start using them. These are two Kushaw green stripe pumpkin plants and that's another one coming up right there. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm just gonna kind of put one of those deep watering things kind of right there. And that way I can just walk out here with a, a gallon milk container or something and put water in these things because you never know about the rain. I'm gonna walk in from this direction to kind of start from this end. I was telling you about my pumpkins um, and doing the deep water. I haven't watered this whole week because we've been under rain warnings all this week. Well, we were supposed to have bad weather come in Tuesday. Then they backed it up to Wednesday. Today is Thursday, April 6th, and we have yet to see a drop of rain. Now it's overcast and it, it, it feels humid and like it wants to rain. So I think we probably will have some rain today but my point is, in the meantime, I haven't been watering because I've been thinking every day that we were gonna have rain showers and we haven't. And so things like pumpkins and all, they need water. So I'm gonna go ahead and install those systems on those pumpkins. That's the patches I was at a while ago, just a second talking to you. And I'm gonna install those systems on those pumpkins. And if we get into stretches like this again, where it's not raining and there's nothing in the forecast, or it is in the forecast, but it's just not happening, then I'm gonna do the deep watering to make sure that I'm not wasting my time growing these things, that I'll have a shot at getting plants. I've shown you the bed that I built in the front of my house. I finished my steps the other day and I've got just a wood chip alley kind of coming down that I can walk on. This is all just wood chips here. But I wanted to show you the little azalea branch section that I had planted. I did show it in a video a while back. But I mentioned to you that I had planted some Lemka Romano beans, which is a green bean that gets kind of flat and wide. I got the seeds from Territorial Seeds and I planted them here, but that's not what this is. 
the Lemko Romanos never came up. They never came up. And I finally dug in there one day to see what was going on. And I found just a pile of mush seed. Well, I did soak those before I planted them. Because a lot of times, I just always soak beans before I plant them. Well, I got my packet out and I looked and it specifically said on there, do not soak these beans. <laughs> I guess because they turned to a pile of mush and they never came up after almost a month. So, you know, pivot, do something else. I got out a different bean. I went and picked out a different bean out of my packet and I'm experimenting with growing something I've never grown before. You can see that they're coming up all in the back there now. And they're coming up in the front, a little more spotty in the front, but they're coming up. They'll eventually all pop out. But what these are, are called Hedrick Greasy Cut Short Beans. A cut short bean is a bean where all the, the little seeds that are in the pods, they just get squished and squished and squished until they're almost square. When you harvest the seed or when you crack it open and look at the seeds, the seeds are almost square from being shoved together. And uh, they got the nickname cut short, I guess, for that reason. They just, they're, instead of being long, like regular green beans, they're shoved together and, and cut short. <laughs> they're made to be short. So they're called greasy beans also because they have a little sheen to them. So it's an Appalachian variety. Uh, I think I got those, I can't remember if I got those from Sustainable Mountain or from Appalachian Heirloom Seeds, one or the other but it's one of the varieties that i've had for a couple of years i bought a lot of those varieties at one point and i just it's taken me a while to plant them all out but i said you know what i have this little row here so i'm going to plant those so that's what this is i'll update you on how they do later i'm hoping they do great this bed is doing great this is my keberica beans they're coming along i've got gray zucchinis and some uh, yellow squash in there and then along the back side I've got little uh, cucumber plants. They're finally starting to take off a little bit and get their other leaves besides just their two cotyledon leaves. So they're taking off my, I'm losing <laughs> artichokes one by one. I've got one plant there, one there, one little half a plant there. It's trying to hang in there. And then one there that just keeps shrinking. But that's okay. I, I'm not, I may not be an artichoke farmer this year, <laughs> but I'm trying and I'm learning. And um, I think a couple of them will make it and we'll see how it goes. Uh, it's, I'm not just going to dwell on this a whole lot. I'll try again later. It's no big deal. These Kajari melon uh, things that I have here so that the melons can train on. Um, I lost my plants in the freeze. I did plant more seeds. And I haven't seen those coming up yet, so that's okay. I'll, I'll do something else um, to train on here. I'll train cucumbers or something on here, but we'll see if they come up here shortly. This is where my hikama seeds are planted. I have not seen anything coming up yet, but I have faith that these are going to come up. Those seeds look very healthy, and these plants are tropical and very hardy. We're sitting here over 80 degrees already today. And so I think they're gonna pop up and do good, but it did say it could take seven to 14 days. So we'll have to see. On either side of my Mary, I'm growing the French sorrel. This one gets a little more shade and they're doing so-so, but not wonderful, but so-so. On this side, they get a little bit more sun and they're starting to get a little bigger over here. I think once we get a really good rain from heaven, not just me watering them or something, they'll do really good. My Ford Hook gems are coming along. I lost one a couple of days ago. I think my dog stepped on it. I was so upset. At first I thought a little squirrel had bit it off because there's a squirrel that's biting off branches off of trees and I see him running up his tree with all kind of branches in his mouth. But since the branch is still laying there, I think my dog stepped on it and snapped it. It doesn't matter, it's gone. Uh, but anyway, I've got that one doing good, that one that one and then this one's doing fabulous and those are all survivors of the freeze so they're doing great this is my second potato patch and it's doing good i just walked up though a little bit of oh okay the, the stems broke okay i was trying to figure out what was wrong with these leaves 
we had massive wind yesterday. We have been so blessed and have been spared the tornadoes that have hit above us in Arkansas and yesterday southern Missouri and everywhere else. We've been spared it. However, we have not been spared a lot of the gusting winds. So some of my plants have kind of taken it on the chin and um, I've, I've come out here and healed them up as best I could, but I mean, it, it just whips. So there's only so much I can do. Over here are my winter squash, that and that, survivors of the freeze, my North Georgia candy roasters. I didn't think my butternut rugosas had survived. It's that one and that one and look at them. I didn't think they had survived. And then I realized I shouldn't have planted them right by my North Georgia candy roasters anyway, because they'll cross pollinate. So I said, well, since they could cross pollinate, I just won't plant these back here. So I planted some more North Georgia candy roasters. I have one, two, three, four, and then I have another one over there that makes five. I planted five extra North Georgia candy roasters only to have these butternut rugosas survive. I don't really care if they cross pollinate. I've got plenty of seeds inside, but um, they're all making it. So basically all four of the plants that I had planted here in the beginning survived that freeze. So I'm just so happy when they survive. I'm surely going to leave them there. I'm not going to bother them. This is my peas. They looked wind whipped from yesterday. <laughs> yesterday was something. It was just something. But they're doing good. They're doing good. They've got peas all over them. I've harvested twice already. I just take a little chair and I move it down the line and I sit here and pick peas. And I've started me a Ziploc in my freezer to freeze them until I get ready to can them. And they're doing so good. It was so worth growing here. And what I did was I came along and at the base of all of this, I have planted scarlet runner beans. So those hopefully within the next few days will start coming up because once these peas start putting off peas, they'll go for a little while, but then they're gonna poop out. These plants are gonna poop out and be done. By that point, the scarlet runner beans will be coming up and will take their spot. I can start trellising the scarlet runners and I'll probably even have to, to put me some screws on these posts here and make even more wiring up there for the scarlet runners if they do okay. I also put some sweet pea seeds every so often up in here so the sweet peas have to be trellised as well. And so they'll take the place of all these peas. But just look at all the peas coming on there. Look at all of them. I love green peas and I'm hoping to have plenty. To the right over here on the other side, um, this is Hessel Sugarloaf winter squash here. Both of them survived the freeze. They're doing great. I have blooms. On those, look at there, just so beautiful. And then I have golden Jenny melons, one, two, three. I did lose one in the freeze, but these have blooms on them too, so they're looking good. I did plant some Swiss chard. I've never planted that, I've never grown that, but I have it in a couple of my beds here, and it seems to be doing good. And then in the middle there, I planted just some flowers and stuff, so we'll, we'll see how it all goes. But, um, so hopefully my Swiss chard will come up. About to wrap it all up here, but I wanted to show you my little sugar kettle, <laughs> which my husband always says it looks yellow, and it does. All of this yellow and brown you see in here is spinach that I'm just letting die off. Um, but I'm leaving it there for the root structure and because I don't want to disturb the soil because meantime I had planted bush beans in here. I lost my Oregon 91 beans during the freeze, but I came back and planted some speedy bush beans and they are being speedy. They have come up very quickly and these are only like a 45 day bean. So I've grown them before, so I'm hoping I'll get me a little harvest out of those. On this row here, survivor of the freeze, a honeydew melon. I've planted some white wonder cucumbers and they're coming up. And then I had the one Italian heirloom tomato survive. So I'll plant some more Italian heirlooms there as soon as they get ready to come out. I had another honeydew melon survive. I have this piece of stone here that used to be in the ground with a four by four stuck in it. It was like the, the bracing for a four by four that was underground where they cemented it in. 
but it doesn't have the four by four anymore but i just kind of put it here and i thought you know it'll be beautiful with some zinnias or something coming up out of it so that's what i planted there i cannot remember if i showed this to you but i had a few of the azalea sticks left so the little small ones so i put them along this bottom part of the ramp and at the bottom of them i planted pink half runner beans Half runners only get about three or four feet tall, so I thought it'd be perfect to plant on this shorter side of the ramp. They came up really good. It almost looks like 100% germination. I mean, just looking at them. I got the seeds a few years ago from Hall's Tools. I had never planted them, so this is my first time to plant pink half runners. We'll see that the beans actually are pink. They probably turn green when you cook them, I guess. I'm not sure, but... Um, we're going to try those and see how it works. I, I want to have a variety of things. I want to have diversity. <laughs> I love diversity as far as food production goes. I just think, you know, you get tired of the same old things sometimes. So I, I'm going for it. This is my lettuce that I showed you the other day. My Italian is your lettuce. And it's getting even bigger and thicker than when I showed it to you. So I'm so, so happy about that. The beds along my driveway are doing everything I wanted them to do. They're anchored on each end by a Mamie Brown's pink tomato. These, I didn't think made it. <laughs> and here they are. Look, it's about over a foot tall. It's just beautiful after the freeze. It's just beautiful. This is my Blue Lake runner beans here. And I've noticed this morning, they've decided to start grabbing onto this metal, which is exactly what I wanted them to do. So they're doing good at the base of them these just started coming up i had lost faith in them i thought my seeds were bad but it's some sumter cucumbers they're little pickling sized cucumbers but they finally decided to make an appearance so hopefully they'll do all right down here i did the same thing except i did ideal market beans there they're starting to uh, finally set some runners and hopefully they'll be grabbing onto the metal soon and then the cucumber in front of these it's called a double yield cucumber. I got them from Annie Seeds, and it says they are very, very prolific and productive. So we're gonna try them. That's another Mamie Brown's pink that I thought wasn't gonna make it, but it, it did. So bless its heart, I'm let it go. I had to put some metal up in front of all of these beds, that one too, and the ones along the ramp, because my dogs just love to run through here and I have dog prints in the beds every morning and I had thought that's why the cucumbers weren't coming up because the dogs had trampled them and stuff but um I fixed that now they haven't gotten in the beds at all since I put that metal there this is my last little spot to show y'all my Matt's wild cherry Matt's wild cherry Matt's wild cherry look at them just look at them they're doing wonderful I had to go ahead and put some um bamboo sticks here because of the wind oh my gosh the some of these plants i walked out here the other day when it was so windy and they were just about laying on the ground and uh, i didn't want to lose them they survived that freeze i just didn't want to have wind knock them over and lose them this is iroquois melon iroquois melon which is a musk melon but looks just like a cantaloupe tastes like a cantaloupe so um they're doing wonderful they're doing good and i can tell that they're gonna uh, produce this year this big old thing here that was just a little baby after the freeze it is my mexico midget cherry tomato plant as well as all three of those and they're all survived and they're all doing great i i'm just so my heart is just so full every time i walk out here and i go y'all just made it and y'all are doing so good <laughs> i'm so excited you can see there i'm getting blossoms and i'll have little little rows of 12 14 tomatoes on those little blossoms here shortly oh my gosh it's just too much the whole miracle of just putting a seed in the ground and and having something like that pop up and grow food for you is just amazing this right here that and that i don't know if i've showed you those I, I think i have but i'm not sure sometimes i film things and it ends up on the cutting room floor so i do know i've filmed this before but i don't know if i showed these to you but these are red latham raspberry plants i had a couple of my listeners my viewers on my channel i asked what do y'all think i should plant here in this area between my house and the ramp it will get a little wet here but i put the wood chips to kind of mitigate that so it's not just constantly soupy with water it, the wood chips kind of absorb them 
but they do get some shade during the day because of this ramp on this side. And I had two different people uh, comment and say, put berry plants. So when I got on uh, Stark Brothers, I believe that's what it's called, Stark Brothers website, I just went to them because I knew they had a lot of information on there about what will grow in your area. So when I got on their website, this was one of the plants they suggested for my area that also coincided with the shipping time being right. I was ordering these in January and they won't really even ship you something unless it's time for you to plant it. it it'll go on back order until it's time or they just will recommend you get a different plant if you're just completely ordering something that may not grow because they do have a money back guarantee on their plants. But so they ship these like little sticks, <laughs> bare root sticks. I put them in the ground and then you trim them off to where only two inches pops up. So for a while there, I was having trouble even seeing where they were in all these wood chips. And um, then one day, not too long ago, I came out here and green was out here. And so now I've got three red latham raspberry plants I'm growing. So I'm, I, I'm, I've never grown them. I've never grown them. So I hope they do great. I also made another little bed under this tree the other day to put one of my grottos and statues and I can't wait. Uh, I'm just doing flowers over here. It's just kind of a little flower garden right now. Well, I take that back. I did put chives right in front of Mary because they won't get really tall at some point they might with their scapes and all but right now they won't be too bad but you see my dog prints <laughs> you see the dog prints there who i get aggravated when you work so hard and then it's nothing but dog prints around it so it doesn't seem to have stopped my seeds though i don't know if you can really see but i have flowers coming up everywhere they're coming up everywhere i'm going to get some of that metal and put around here and uh, hopefully try to keep the dogs out of it to give these flowers a chance to grow. But um, we'll just have to see how it goes. Around this little thing, I just had this, this was left on the property, so I had it. I just stuck it here and planted some sweet pea seeds around the bottom of it so the sweet peas can climb on that. That's what I've done thus far. Um, it's a lot of work. <laughs> it takes a lot of work to get things kind of going and get Get the plants an environment where they're kind of happy um i'm happy with it i'm happy with it and i've still got a lot of dirt left and i've still got a lot of wood chips left and i've got a lot of plans for what i'm going to do with some of those things as i said i'm going to try to ring around trees as many trees as i can to make it easier on me and my son for mowing but also some of those planting areas i'm going to put some dirt as well so that i can put some more things I think I might put a lot more pumpkins, uh, some winter squash, some different things that I can still plant since it's only early April and get as much food growing around here as possible. So, and I haven't even touched my backyard really. I really haven't touched my backyard. Oh, and I just realized I walked right past and forgot to show you a walking onion bed that I started. Um, different walking onions than the ones I showed you on another video in the fall. These my friend gave me and they're coming up like crazy up here. So hopefully it looks like I will have lots of walking onions coming up. I'm so excited. I still have some in the back from when I planted in the fall, but they didn't do as great back there. I don't think they like it as great back there. They seem to love it up here where I planted them. So I'm happy about that. So between it all, I should have a really good variety of things. I should have hopefully plenty of tomatoes and peppers I can sell plenty of cantaloupes I might can get out there and sell and yet still have enough for us to eat and to put up and to help and have food security for our family. But I just wanted to give you a little garden tour today while it was kind of early in the day, wasn't too hot, <laughs> and to show you what all I have going. I hope your gardens are going good. I hope you're working hard. I hope you're getting things growing. This is Lainey from Hilltop Home Place. Thank y'all so much for joining me. Bye-bye.